Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Podcast Network Asia. Network Asia. This episode may include topics, references, or discussions around sexual assault, domestic violence, stalking, physical violence, or subject matters that may be disturbing to some of our listeners. We do acknowledge that this content may be difficult. We also encourage you to care for your safety and well-being. Shocking, sad, revealing, and deeply researched, PH Murder Stories podcast covers the true account of infamous killings and true crime stories from the Philippines. There's no such thing as questions, just hidden answers. Stay tuned as we revisit the inconceivable crimes that exist. Some listeners may find the following content of PH Murder Stories highly disturbing due to its graphic nature. PH Murder Stories does not condone nor promote violence of all sorts. Viewer discretion is advised. Before we proceed with this episode, we would like to thank Ms. Emerald Sigua for suggesting this case and participating in our Donate for a Case program that we conducted last December 2021. Our team partnered with the Rotaract Club of Taguig and its sponsors with their relief efforts intended for the victims of Typhoon Odette. For our part, we launched a program called Donate for a Case where our listeners can suggest an episode that we will add to our priority list in exchange for their donation with the Rotaract's relief efforts. Through the years, infamous Chop Chop Lady cases in the Philippines have truly shocked the entire nation. Most of these cases usually occur to women or are somewhat related to a crime of passion. However, Emerald suggested a case that many people haven't heard of yet through our Donate for a Case program. This Chop Chop related case is one of the most bizarre and gruesome cases in the country that would leave you in awe. Before we proceed with this episode, Please give us a rating on Spotify or Apple. It would truly benefit our show to gain more listeners. Also, if you want to have your case suggestions prioritized, please subscribe to our Prime Suspect tier on Patreon. Link in the description. Bilang ama, sa sinapit ng anak ko, napakahirap. Yung ngit-ngit ko, yung galit ko, pulang nga siya ng hita eh. Hindi natagpuan yung hita ko. Isa lang masabi ko, ah, uh, sadista. Yung malapit sa bahay na nakipagtulungan sa amin na nakunan nila na may mga nagaganap sa likod bahay sa pamamagitan ng CCTV. Sa CCTV na tagpuan ko namin, mayroong tatlong tao. Ang ginagawa po ng tatlong taong ito ay uh, busy uh, na, sa activity na paririto at paroroon kung saan namin na nakita yung bagkay. Yung <coughs> dalawang magkapatid, ang tanging sot lamang ay mga brief. Nakita din namin na gamit ng isang wheelbarrow, may laman na mabigat na tinutulungan, nagtutulungan sila at may takip. At... Uh, Minsan, may dala laging tubig patungo doon sa likod o sa backyard nila. Habang sinasagawa po nila yung pabalik-balik, yung isa, lagi nakatingin po sa may CCTV. Nakailang balik po siya at may mga dalang uh, supot na may black bag na may lamang mabigat na bagay at may dalang uh, minsan lupa pabalik-balik. A body of a 19-year-old boy was found chopped into pieces and buried at a private compound in Barangay Ampid Dos, San Mateo, Rizal. Days before the gruesome crime was discovered, a crucial eyewitness 
saw three young men wandering around the crime scene. Meanwhile, investigators assigned to the case also uncovered a CCTV camera placed near the compound, which caught the suspects pushing a wheelbarrow that seemed to contain the body of Lyndon Masin Sin. On April 3, 2017, Lyndon Masin Sin, a 19-year-old boy from San Mateo Rizal, was reported missing by his parents after not being seen at home for the past few days. According to his father, Michael Masinsin, he received a text message from Lyndon saying, quote, Pasensya na, napagtripan ako ng polis. Nagtatago muna ako. Unquote. Michael replied, quote, Sinong polis? Umuwi ka nga o tawagan mo ako? Unquote. But Lyndon did not reply. Next, Michael tried calling his son, but he wasn't answering. This led Lyndon's parents to go straight to the police. Two days later, authorities from the San Mateo Municipal Police received a tip from the owner of the compound, claiming that he noticed a foul-smelling drum placed in his property in Barangay Ampid, Dos. Based on the testimony of the witness, the foul smell coming from the drum seemed like it did not come from a dead animal, but from a dead person's body. Aside from the drum, the witness also told the authorities that he saw a newly dug pit that seemed to be six to seven feet deep. Subsequently, the police went to the compound with a search warrant, six days after the crucial witness conveyed his testimony. After arriving at the crime scene, the police went ahead to check the foul-smelling drum as indicated by the witness that might have the remains of a dead person. However, the police did not find anything inside the drum upon checking. Next, the authorities focused their sights on the fresh pit near the drum was found and started excavating the soil, find out what was buried beneath it. An hour later, authorities came across the body parts with a resemblance to a young man, which later on they confirmed belonged to Lyndon Masinsin. Aside from Lyndon's remains, they also uncovered the tools used by the suspects, such as a wood saw, a knife, two pairs of scissors, a hacksaw, a metal saw, a hammer, and the bolo. Hi, ako si Earl, ang inyong Camp Master sa Philippine Campfire Stories Podcast. This podcast is about stories of myths, legends, and true horror stories from the Philippines narrated in Tagalog, powered by Podcast Network Asia. Listen to Philippine Camper Stories available in all major podcast platforms. Meanwhile, the police also found a CCTV placed near the crime scene. CCTV footage from April 2, a day before Lyndon was reported missing showed three young men, some only wearing their underwear, roaming around the compound with a wheelbarrow that seemed to contain the remains of Lyndon Masinsin. The authorities also found out that the young men were cautious of the CCTV footage and were caught looking at the CCTV several times. Nevertheless, the police promptly identified the suspects behind the gruesome murder of Lyndon Masinsin. The San Mateo police arrested siblings 17-year-old Reynaldo Chay III and 16-year-old Reynaldo Chay IV. Both are known to be friends of Lyndon.
A third person, named Lance, who was already 18 years of age, was also identified by the authorities, but remains to be missing up to this date. The police also uncovered a screenshot from a group chat between one of the suspects planning to beat up Lyndon for allegedly stealing a cell phone charger. According to PO3, Reynante Buenaventura, one of the investigators assigned to the case, the suspect said they killed Lyndon because of a stolen charger. The siblings also confessed that they chopped Lyndon's body into pieces at their residence before transferring and burying his remains to the compound, as seen in the CCTV footage. Based on the suspect's confession, they initially thought of burning Lyndon's body before burying him, but decided to proceed with the latter right away. With the overwhelming evidence and confession from the suspects, both siblings were charged with murder. According to SPO1, Gomercindo Digma, the Chai siblings did not have an adult figure at home. Their father was already dead, while their mother went to the United Kingdom to work and provide for them. It was also implied that both suspects could have developed hatred towards Lyndon because there were times that the victim was allegedly stealing money and gadgets from them. Apparently, the two suspects were affected by the circumstances of losing their father and not having their mother look closely after them. Bilang ama, sa sinapit ng anak ko, napakahirap. Yung ngit-ngit ko, yung galit ko, wala nga siya ng hita eh. Hindi natagpuan yung hita ko. Isa lang masabi ko, ah, uh, sadista. Michael Masinsin, Lyndon's father, described in an interview with ABS-CBN's most notable crime show, Scene of the Crime Operatives, that the perpetrators of his son's gruesome murder were sadists. Indeed, this case is one of the most peculiar cases that our show has come across. We couldn't fathom the idea of minors being capable of planning these kinds of gruesome acts especially for a shallow reason, in this case, over a stolen charger. Yes, there are similar cases in other countries where minors are capable of such actions, but we are under the impression that most Filipinos, especially minors, are taught to be respectful and religious. It is hard to understand how the suspects came across the idea of killing their friend in a gruesome, in heartless manner. For further updates, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at PH Murder Stories, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. PH Murder Stories. If you have case suggestions, please go to our website at phmurderstories.com and fill out the request form at File Your Blotter. Did you like this episode? Give us a rating on Apple Podcasts, or if you're listening on other platforms, kindly send us a review on our Facebook page or send us a tweet. You can also share our podcast to your Instagram and Facebook stories through Spotify. We're also inviting you to join our Facebook group, PH Murder Stories The Verdict, and participate in our discourse about true crime, both local and international. This group is a safe space for true crime and mystery fans like us who want to engage in thorough discussions about the subject. To all our listeners, we hope you could support us on Patreon. If you're fond of online shopping, 
You can also help our team earn a small commission by clicking our Lazada and Shopee affiliate links found in the description. Any amount you contribute will enormously help support our team to produce more quality content. The views and opinions expressed by the podcast creators, hosts, and guests do not necessarily reflect the official policy and position of Podcast Network Asia, the hosts of the program, or other programs of the network. Any content provided by the people on the podcast are of their own opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything.